You might be wondering, what on earth is going on here? Well, for some time now, we've been working on automating the benchmark process and we built our own tool to do it. Everything from Geekbench right down to playback and exporting in Final Cut Pro. We have a total of 15 benchmarks, however, we wanted to do things a bit differently. Instead of just giving you the score for each benchmark, we're going to start a timer and see how long each laptop takes to complete the full run. Oh, and there's more. To go along with these 15 consecutive tests, we got all the metrics, from clock speeds to power draw to RAM usage to thermals and so much more. So welcome to the Zone of Tech Performance Analysis Series, Episode 1, the 14-inch Mago Pro Baseline versus the 13-inch Mago Pro Baseline. Now before we start the performance analysis, I want to give a shout out to Clean My Mac X for sponsoring this video. If you have an older Mac or even if you have the brand new 14 and 16 inch models and you want to make sure that they stay fast, then Clean My Mac X is the all-in-one tool that can do that. With Clean My Mac X, you can optimize your Mac by deleting unnecessary cache files, re-indexing spotlights, repairing this permissions, completely removing every trace of an app, and so much more. Check it out by using the link below and make sure to use the coupon code Zone of Tech for a 30% discount until the 24th of November. And now, back to the video. Now, some of you might be wondering, how do these MacBooks actually compare in each of those 15 tests side by side? Like, will we actually see any thermal throttling or any differences in terms of the clock speeds or the power draw? Well, before we get straight into the timed head-to-head -head comparison, we'll go through each app side by side so that we can show you the difference between them. And then we'll bring back the timer and show you the results of the full speed test. Starting off with Geekbench 5, to make things easier for you, we've synced the footage for all of these tests so that they start at the exact same time on both laptops, and we created these beautiful graphs for you to get a better idea of what's happening. Geekbench 5 is a burst benchmark, reason why we are seeing these spikes in the CPU usage. If you take a look at the clock speeds, the high performance cores are staying at about the same frequency on both laptops, but of course that's on the 14 inch, we have two clusters of high performance cores. Uh, first one with four, second one with two. On the 13 inch, we only have one cluster with four. So on the 14 inch, this should give us a much higher multi-core score. The temperatures remained almost the same on both, but the fans on the 14 inch were completely off for the entirety of the test, while the fan on the 13 inch turned on towards the end, although on a very low level. The RAM usage was much higher on the 14 inch model, which does have 16 gigabytes of RAM versus 8, so Geekbench wasn't really taking advantage of that. We have our results and it looks like the single core score was almost identical, but the multi-core was 27% higher on the 14 inch, uh, thanks to those two extra high performance cores. We then moved on to Cinebench to see how it would impact the temperatures and the clock speeds. Both the temps and the clock speeds were about the same at the start of the test, but then halfway through it, the CPU temps had gotten much higher on the 14 inch, 90 degrees compared to 86, and the GPU temperatures were 78 on the 14 inch model compared to 30 on the 13 inch, which is really strange as the GPU itself should not be in use at all during uh, this test. And it's technically not if you take a look at the GPU frequency, but on the 14 inch, it did get very hot. If we take a look at the chassis temperature, the 14 inch was at 43.5 degrees on the keyboard right above the SOC, compared to 39.6 on the 13 inch. The CPU usage was pretty much the same on both. The 14 did have a slightly higher clock speed throughout, but overall, they were both sitting at around 3 GHz consistently, while both drawing about 25 watts of power. The test has now finished, and the 14 inch got a 27% higher score, very similar to Geekbench in this regard. And now we're testing the graphics with GFX Bench off screen so that the resolution of these displays does not impact the results. And keep in mind that the 14 inch is the baseline model with 14 GPU cores, whereas the 13 inch only has 8 GPU cores. If we take a look at the GPU frequency, the 14 inch was running at 1296 MHz compared to 1278 MHz on the 13 inch model. The 14 inch GPU was also drawing 19.5 watts of power compared to just 10.4 on the 13 inch model. Uh, the 14 GPU was also hotter by almost 10 degrees, likely due to that much higher power draw. I'm really curious to see how the RAM is being used here as RAM on Apple Silicon also acts as video memory. And we can indeed see that a 14 inch used significantly more RAM, whereas the 13 inch did show some signs of memory pressure. We have results and I'm blown away. The 13 inch had an average frame rate of 76.2 frames per second. However, the base 14 inch had an average of 141.7. That's 
an 85% higher frame rate on the base 14-inch model, which is even more than that 75% increase in GPU core counts. Next up, we have Geekbench Compute, uh, where we selected the Metal API for the best possible performance. Now, the reason why we are testing Geekbench Compute as well is that just like the standard Geekbench, this is a burst benchmark, but one that is stressing out the GPU rather than the CPU. I can indeed see that the frequencies on both of these GPUs were jumping like crazy. It's hard to tell if the 14-inch was running at a higher frequency because of how much it jumped, uh, the CPU and the GPU temperatures were almost identical between the two. The test has finished and the 14 scored 74% higher. So just about right here, considering that 75% increase in GPU core count. So it looks like the raw CPU improvements are just about 25%, but the GPU improvements are massive, 75 to even 85%. Now, before we move on to some real world benchmarks, we are now going to compare the storage speeds using AGA the speed test on a 16 gigabyte 4K file. And it looks like the 14-inch has a 45% higher write speed and a 67% higher read speed. So now I'm really curious to see how all of this CPU, GPU, and storage performance would impact the real world usage. And just as a reminder that all of these tests are running in the background with the timer still going. And even though they appear to start at the same time, just because we sync them for this part of the video, one of these laptops is actually very far ahead. Moving on to real world tests, we first have Lightroom, where we imported 228 photos ranging from massive 50 megapixel raw images to JPEGs to HEICs, so it's pretty much a mix of everything. Importing these photos was pretty quick. Uh, the 13-inch did it in 22 seconds, while the 14-inch did it in 17 seconds, so 22% faster thanks to that storage. And something interesting that I've noticed during the imports was that the 13-inch started using swap memory, which means that it was actually using the SSD as RAM due to only having eight gigabytes. And it looks like even then, the memory pressure kept going up. Once the images were imported, we picked one image and applied the following preset. We bumped the shadows by 100, we lowered the highlights by 100, we applied noise reduction, a vignette, increased the texture and clarity, and bumped the saturation too. And we then pasted this preset to all the other photos. This was actually faster than I expected, with a 13-inch finishing in one minute and eight seconds, while the 14-inch finished in one minute and three seconds. So a very small difference here, but I have noticed that a 13-inch was starting to use more and more swap memory. We then exported all of these 228 photos as JPEGs, and this is where it got very interesting. The 13-inch was actually faster, not even kidding. Exporting in 14 minutes and 51 seconds compared to 15 minutes and 33 seconds on the 14-inch model. This was actually a substantial difference. We actually ran this test again on our own, and the results were exactly the same. The 13-inch was consistently faster. So I had to look through the graphs to see if I could tell what was actually happening, but I couldn't really see anything that would give us this result. The 14-inch was using both high-performance core clusters and also at a very high frequency. Even the low-performance cores were at a higher frequency than on the 13-inch model. The power draw was also higher on the 14-inch at 21.3 watts compared to 13.1 watts, and Lightroom was also using more RAM as well as 1.5 gigabytes of swap memory on the 14-inch model. But even with more power draw, a higher CPU clock, uh, and more RAM usage, the 14-inch model was slower, which makes zero sense. My only guess is that Lightroom was actually optimized to take full advantage of those four low performance cores on the 13-inch model. The 14-inch model only has two low performance cores, but it does have those two extra high performance cores, which I'm assuming Lightroom has yet to be optimized for. I'm hoping that a future update will fix this issue and we would start seeing better results on the 14-inch model. We then moved on to Photoshop, where we imported a 50 megapixel raw image and applied the raw pastel, the colored pencil, and the dry brush filters, while also applying some adjustments to each of these. You would probably expect this to be instant, but it actually took a long time, considering. 1 minute and 38 seconds on a 13-inch and 1 minute and 37 seconds on the 14-inch. So the 14-inch was faster by one second, but something interesting that I found here was that applying some of these filters and adjustments was actually faster on the 13-inch model. 
the only exception being the last filter, where the 14 inch was almost twice as fast, reason why it overall ended up being faster by one second. During this entire Photoshop test, clock speeds and the CPU temperatures were slightly higher on the 14 inch, and the 14 inch was also using more RAM, while the 13 inch was actually struggling here if we take a look at the memory pressure. Once again, it looks to me that Adobe still has a lot of optimizations to do on the new MacBook Pro chips, as the difference should have been much bigger. We're now moving on to Final Cut, where we have three different tests. The first one being our Pixel 6 Pro versus S21 Ultra camera comparison, which is a 15 minute 4K project with loads of side by side shots, motion graphics, as well as an H265 A roll. So, yeah, this is a very demanding project. Now, if we take a look at the timeline playback, which I should say is even more important than uh, the export time. It was definitely more fluid on the 14 inch model. If we take a look at the picture in picture window of my recording, uh, the 13 inch was dropping frames like crazy, but a 14 inch, although it was dropping some frames too, it was significantly more fluid. And by the way, these were both set to quality mode. We've now started the exports into H.264, and it looks like the 14 inch is just blazing through it, while the 13 inch is literally taking forever. But then when I saw the actual export results, I was shocked. The 13 inch took one hour and 11 minutes, while the 14 inch only took 16 minutes and 12 seconds. So the 14 inch was 4.4 times faster. During the export, the CPUs were barely drawing any power. The GPUs were drawing as much as 17 watts of power in the case of the 14 inch compared to just four watts on the 13 inch, which could explain the massive difference in results. But at the same time, the GPU frequency was almost exactly the same on both. So it is very likely that the dedicated H.264 encoder on the 14 inch model was what made it so much faster. We then moved onto a 6K project that was much shorter, only five minutes it's in length and it also lacked the many effects that our 4k project had however this one was fully shot in 6k h.265 and the biggest difference that i've noticed here was in terms of playback the 14 inch was perfectly smooth whereas the 13 inch was definitely dropping some frames during some of the uh, 3d title playback now exporting was a bit of a different story here the 13 inch took 39 minutes and 38 seconds while the 14 inch took 21 minutes and 36 seconds so the 14 inch was only 1.83 times faster here compared to the 4.4 time difference that we had before in the 4k test the gpu usage during this export was extremely low on both machines likely due to the project being quite simple and both machines utilizing their h.265 encoders which does explain why the difference between the 13 inch and the 14 inch wasn't as large as before. We then moved on to our final final cut test, which was a five minute 8K 60 frames per second project with red raw footage. Not only that, but we had side by side clips as well as motion track text. This was by far our most demanding project. Now, there's a playback. Uh, look at how much smoother the 14 inch is. And once again, these were two 8K clips side by side in full quality mode. So it's pretty insane that this is even playable at all. In terms of export times, the 13 inch took two hours and 44 minutes to export, while the 14 inch finished in one hour and four minutes. So 2.56 times faster, still a lot considering that this is a five minute project, but it was 8K, which explains why this project had the most RAM usage out of all of these tests, as uh, the computers needed the extra video memory. But we can see that even the 14 inch was using almost two gigabytes of swap here, and the memory pressure was substantial on both. So definitely make sure that you have enough RAM if you plan on working with 8K footage. Seems like even 16 gigabytes was a bit of a struggle here. The temperatures did remain quite consistent, with the 14 inch running about 5 to 10 degrees hotter than the 13 inch during all of our Final Cut tests. In general, Final Cut did make really good use of the new M1 Pro chip inside the 14 inch, as the clock speed of both high performance core clusters was consistently over 3 gigahertz, and resources were almost always maxed out on both machines. We then moved on to Logic Pro 10, where we exported each track from Billy Eilish's sample project as individual AIFF 16 bit files. This is where the CPU core count matters the most, and we can definitely see that the CPUs are being maxed out on both machines. Weirdly enough, the 13 inch was also using its GPU with a frequency that was almost 10 times higher than on the 14 inch, and the 13 inch was also drawing much more power, 10 watts on the CPU compared to 4 watts, and 2 watts on the GPU compared to 0.2. 
This might explain why the results were so similar. The 14 inch was only one second faster than the 13 inch, despite it having two more high performance cores. So it does seem like Logic Pro 10 has yet to be fully optimized to take advantage of the M1 Pro chip either, at least in terms of the exports. We then tested Xcode, which just like Logic, cares more about the number of CPU cores than anything else. And same as with Logic, not only was the CPU frequency maxed out on both, but a GPU was also in use on the 13 inch model, with it running at almost a 10 times higher frequency than the 14 inch. And take a look at those temperatures. Even though the GPU on the 14 inch was not in use, it had a temperature of 68 degrees compared to just 30 on the 13 inch model, which was indeed using the GPU as well. So it looks like the cooling system on the new 14 inch, although it is more powerful, it does struggle to keep the GPU cool when the CPU is being maxed out. But that didn't matter in terms of the results, as the 14 inch was 1.25 times faster, compiling our project in just 414 seconds compared to 500. Next up we have Blender, where we rendered the classroom scene using the Cycles CPU renderer. This is a very demanding take by the way that would max out the CPU for a very long period of time. And we can see that the 14 inch was immediately ahead of the 13 inch thanks to those two extra high performance cores. Surprisingly, the CPU temps weren't that much different here, with both just being about 4 degrees apart towards the end, and that's because this time, the fan was almost maxed out on the 13-inch model, while the 14-inch was running the fans at about 50% their maximum speed. Also, the 14-inch was drawing much more power than the 13-inch, with just over 21 watts compared to about 14 watts, which is the highest that a 13 inch got to during this test. The 13 inch took 19 minutes and 32 seconds to render, while the 14 inch took 14 minutes and 37 seconds, which makes the 14 inch 1.33 times faster. Now, since these machines have been running all of these tests back to back for the past few hours, we're going to run one more Geekbench and one more GFX benchmark to see if we get any throttling after hours of continuous use. In Geekbench, the 14 inch was now 28% faster than the 13 inch, so the difference between the scores was now 1% higher as the 13 inch throttled down by 1.62%, while the 14 inch only throttled down by 0.77%. Yeah, that new thermal system does seem to work. And in terms of GFX Bench, the difference between them was now 83% compared to 85, with the 13 inch losing 0.22% GPU performance, while the 14 inch lost 1.08. So the 14 inch did throttle more on the GPU, which is consistent with the pretty high temps that we've seen throughout this entire test. And now that we've gone through each test individually, we can finally take a look at a timer and see how fast they each took to complete the run. So in the first 30 minutes, they were almost neck and neck, and that's because there wasn't that much difference between them in the Photoshop and Lightroom tests. But once they reached the final cut tests, which was at about 37 minutes for both, that's when the 13 inch started falling massively behind. By the time the 14 inch finished the 8K export, the 13 inch was still exporting the 4K footage. And by the time the 14 inch finished a full run in two hours and 51 minutes, the 13 inch was still exporting the 8K project and finally finished in 5 hours and 52 minutes. The 14 inch was 2.05 times faster. So in conclusion, the 14 inch was consistently running hotter, especially the GPU, but even then the GPU was still about 85% more powerful than the M1, while the CPU was about 25% more powerful. So if you work with Lightroom, Photoshop, Logic, and even Xcode, I don't think you're going to benefit that much from the 14 inch, but if you render long projects using a CPU renderer, then the 14 inch would indeed make a pretty substantial difference, like we've seen with Blender. If your workflow involves 3D modeling and video effects where the GPU would be heavily used, then the 14 inch would be a gigantic improvement, like we've seen with our GFX Bench off screen test. And if you are a video editor that works with H.264 and 265 files especially, the 14 inch would be up to 4.4 times faster thanks to not just the dedicated H.264 and 265 and ProRes encoders, but also thanks to the much more powerful GPU. However, running side by side benchmarks can indeed be misleading because you might think that a difference of a few minutes or even a few seconds isn't much, but in the real world, that all adds up. As you've seen from our full speed run, 
the M1 ended up being three full hours slower than the base 14 inch M1 Pro by the end of our run. Now, of course, that if your workflow is much lighter, you won't be saving three hours each day, but you might save three hours each week or even three hours each month, which I would still say is quite significant. Let us know what machines you want us to compare next and if you want us to add more tests to our custom benchmark tool. I'm Daniel, this is Enough Tech. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in the next one. It's Enough Tech, signing out. Cheers. Yeah.